Hi, I'm Judith Patterson. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Texas. Um, today is the first day of celebration, and it's also the first day where you can shop from the mini catalog. So for every, there we go, $50 you spend, um, you get to choose a product out of the celebration catalog for free. So it's so exciting. Um, there are a couple of products in this catalog that are free with a hundred dollar purchase. So there's this, um, delicate dahlia set. So pretty. And there's also, yes, the summer shadows dies. And if you have the summer shadows, um, stamp set from the annual catalog, you're going to want to get these dies. Um, so, but there's also, there's plenty of products that are free with a $50 purchase. So you don't have to, you don't have to do that hundred dollar purchase just to get some free products. Um, if you do want to do a hundred dollar purchase, um, I wanted to let you know that joining Stampin' Up! costs $99. For that $99, you get um, $125. This is U.S. So in the U.S., for $99, if you join Stampin' Up!, you get $125 worth of products that you choose. So if you've been stamping a long time and you don't want like a basic startup kit, you can choose which products you get. Um, you can also during celebration, you can choose a bundle out of this mini catalog. So the bundles that you can choose from, and this is a free item that you get on top of your joining, um, your $125 products for joining. You can choose one of these bundles. They're listed on the last page of the celebration brochure, um, but they are from the mini catalog. So if you have any questions about that, then just send me a comment. Um, you can link over to my blog and there's a spot that you can send me comments um, on that. Or you can comment at the bottom of this and I can, I can comment you back or send me a private message, whatever we need to do. Um, but I'd be happy to answer any questions and to help you out with that. I'd love to have you on my team. And like I say, this is a great time to join Stampin' Up! because you get bonus products. Um, but enough of that. So the card we're going to be making today is using this adorable counting sheep stamp set. And this is from the celebration. So I got this for free. This is a simple card made even more simple by using the Stamparatus. The Stamparatus is perfect when you want to line things up like I perfectly balanced this sheep on top of this sheep and this hat on top of that sheep. So the Stamparatus made that quick and painless and not a lot of thinking and trying to make sure everything was just perfectly lined up. And since I've got it all lined up on my Stamparatus now, if I wanted to, I could just sit and create tons of cards like this really quickly um, because there's just not a lot to it. So let me flip my camera around and I'm going to show you how to do this. Okay. Let me get rid of this little banner. Oh, I did real quick. So there's the bundles. It shows what um, page numbers they're on. It's got my website is on there, but I am looking and some reason I added two dots after www. It's still only one dot. Love seeing those typos after the fact. Um, I'll have to fix that later. But these are some great bundles. Let's see my favorite bundle on here. Oh, I don't know if I could choose my favorite. I really love Penguin Place, but Sweet Little Stockings is too cute. And Peaceful Deer, I haven't even gotten to play with yet, but I'm looking forward to, I just added that to an order this morning. Oh, and Gorgeous Leaves, perfect for the fall. And then there's Nature's Harvest. I've seen so many gorgeous cards made with that. So really, oh, Whimsical Trees, that's one of my favorites too. So yeah, you can't go wrong with these bundles. Um, and I will add a link to a PDF if you want to have that available. And over on my blog, um, oh, how do I get rid of this? 
over on my blog. There is going to be um, on my blog, there will be a um, digital celebration brochure and mini catalog that you can download and browse through. Of course, you can go to my online shop. And if you are in the U.S., you don't already have a demonstrator and you would like to have a physical catalog that you get in the mail, I would love to send you one. So just give me a shout and I'll get that in the mail for you. Okay. So let's see what we're going to need for this card. So for a card stock, I just have a scrap of fresh freesia and the card base is fresh freesia. This is eight and a half by five and a half inches scored at four and a quarter inches. This is just a scrap I picked up. Um, this one happens to measure one and a half by two inches, but as you can see, we're going to trim a lot of that off. Um, I have a medium white envelope and this sheet is two and three eighths by six inches. This is another, um, celebration product. It's the Penguin Playmate designer series paper, and it coordinates beautifully with the Penguin bundle that you saw. Um, so there's that sheet of that, and then also a four by five and a quarter inch sheet. And then these are placed inside the card. Of course, this is optional, but I had, um, after making my first card and cutting the cardstock for the second card, I had just enough of this designer, designer series paper left in a, like a strips of it that, um, I decided to cut a quarter inch and a half an inch piece for each card. And it was perfect. I didn't have any scraps that way. Um, and then, so I put them like this inside my card. I think for the next card, I'm going to flip them upside down for this card that we're doing now. And I'm going to put the wider strip on the bottom and the thinner strip on the top. I don't know why. It just seems like that makes more sense in my head. So this sheet of basic white cardstock is three and a half inches. No, this one is four inches, about five and a quarter inches. This goes on the inside. This is what we'll be attaching these to. And then this basic white sheet is three and a half by four and three quarters. I had to look over at my notes because I could remember that number. Um, okay, so this is my Stamparatus my favorite tool today. I have a lot of favorite tools, um, but this one is so amazing. So I have a piece of grid paper here. You can get grid paper that's sized perfectly for these. Um, and what I did was just I lightly stamped my sheep on here and the little hat until I had it exactly lined up. Um, I tried not to, to ink up just a whole lot. I tried to keep it pretty light while I was stamping. Um, but once I got it perfectly lined up, you can see I have an arrow here. So I knew that that's where I needed to put, or I know that's where I need to put my cardstock. So I can put my cardstock right there on that arrow. There we go. So then I'm going to use my magnets hold this card stuck down. And let me tell you, these magnets are strong. So what I did is I have my hat and my sheet on this one. So I put this sheet down first and I um, had him where I wanted him. And then I moved this one on this top plate around until I had it perfectly. And then I picked it up with this plate. And then I added the hat until I had it perfectly set and I picked it up with this plate. And I, like I say, I checked everything on this grid paper so I wasn't wasting cardstock to make sure that it was all perfectly lined up. And now that it is, um, we're good to go. So this is great too, something like this. Like if you're gonna be doing a card class, if you're a demonstrator um, and you're gonna have people coming over and 
everybody's going to be stamping this card. This is great because even newbies can do this. Like anybody can take these stamps that are already on here, line up your cardstock, ink, and you're good to go. Okay, so speaking of inking, let me grab my glasses so that I'm good to go. And I'm just going to grab my Memento Tuxedo Black. Oh, I didn't tell you what ink we're going to be using. So the only ink pad we're using for this card is the Memento Tuxedo Black. Um, and then we're going to color the sheep, or I'm going to color the sheep, using Stampin' Blends. And then, um, but you can also, if you have the markers and you would rather color with the markers or the watercolor pencils, then that's fine too. You don't have to, you don't have to color it just like a color and you can do your thing. I'm okay with that. Whatever you have available. Okay. Look, isn't it adorable? I love this. I'm going to pull it up so you can see it a little better. So you can see his um, little ear is overlapping, but there's a circle there too. So what I did on my card was I colored the circle with the misty moonlight. Let's see if that'll focus. There we go. I colored it with the misty moonlight, and then I covered colored the very tip of his ear with the smoky slate to make it match this ear. And um, so you really can't tell that I stamped over his ear that way. I think it worked out pretty good. Oh, almost got ink on that. Okay, so for now, to put this to the side, I'm going to just close it up like this, and I can take that top plate off and stack it, because you can't close both of these at the same time. So I'm just going to stack them like that, stick it out of the way, and we're good to go. Okay, so what we're using, or what I'm using, is Dark Fresh Freesia. Dark Knot of Navy, Light Smoky Slate, Light Petal Pink, and Light Basic Black. So, and I'm not coloring the whole sheep. I, I know um, you can color the whole sheep, but I, well, I'm not that great of a colorer. And I like it to be quick. So I'm just going to color the little faces. Like I say, I'm doing this really quickly. Then I'm going to color the little legs. Gonna color their feet. I like using the lot basic black for things like this because it's black, but you can still see through it to the um, detail from the stamp. So I've got a good color, good coverage, but it's not so dark that I can't see what's going on under there. Okay, then I'm going to color their little ears. Okay, I'm going to start with the fresh freesia on the hat. And then, like I said, I'm going to do this circle down here in the corner with a dark, misty moonlight. And that way, you can't really tell what's happening with this ear there. It just looks like part of the hat. Okay, so my next stamp is So Glad It's Your Birthday. And this is part of the stamp, stamp set, too. This is the only stamp set I'm using today.
And then I'm just going to use my paper snips. And I'm going to trim around this. I'm not measuring it. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. I'm not going to agonize over this little piece. Okay. So we're finished stamping. And all we have to do is put this little card together now. Got to figure out where all my pieces are. Okay. So I'm going to take my glue. I'm going to start by gluing down the DSP on the front of the card base. And I'm going to glue these little guys down. Then I'm going to use my Stampin' Dimensionals on the back of this strip. I used three on the other one and I realized that's probably a little much for that teeny tiny little piece. Okay. There we go. So that was simple. Okay, so now the big, the wider strip is going to go on the bottom. Having a hard time picking stuff up today. I have a hard time picking stuff up most days. I keep thinking about having my nails done, and then I think there's no way I wouldn't be able to pick anything up if I had fancy nails. I'd be dropping stuff constantly. Okay, so now, just add a bit of glue to this. And we're going to place it on the inside. And you can decide if you like to have um, this more narrow strip at the top or if you like it at the bottom better. Or you might just want one, or you might not want any. It's totally up to you. So there's our cards. So it's no surprise probably that I love the sheep because I love the chickens that we had before and the donkey that we had at um, the beginning of the year for celebration. My favorite. He was so cute. Okay, so now for the envelope. It needs to be jazzed up a little bit. So I'm going to add my liquid glue with the flap open. I'm going to add my liquid glue to the outside of the flap. And I'm getting fairly close to the edges here. I don't want to go over, but I also want to make sure that my um, DSP is glued on really well around the edges. I don't want it getting snagged on something I'm pulling up in the mail or I don't know somebody's car okay and since I used glue I have a few minutes that I can adjust it and make sure it's straight not a few minutes a few seconds where I can adjust it and make sure it's straight we're looking good so now just going to trim around this edge here
There we go. Smooth it out one more time. And then, I don't know, should we add? I don't want that one. But maybe this one? I don't know. What do you think? Do we need a sheep added to the front of the envelope? Or should we just leave it blank? I'm going to leave it blank for now. Um, Y'all might change my mind. We'll see what, what everybody says. But that is all I have for you today. Super fast card. Super easy. The Stamparatus just makes life easy. Um, and quick. Especially if, like this Christmas, if you're going to be making a lot of the same card, totally recommend getting a Stamparatus. And now is a great time to buy them because, let's see, the Stamparatus is on page, should have looked this up, huh? It is on Here it is. Okay, page 144. I don't know if you can see that in the side here. But the Stamparatus itself is $49. So you add one teeny tiny little thing to that, and you've got a free product. So, and like I say, it's super handy to have it when you're getting ready to send all your Christmas cards out because then you can make the same card 5, 10, 20 times and do it in a snap because all you have to do is ink Place your cardstock, stamp, you're good. Repeat over and over and over again. All right. Y'all have a great afternoon. I will see you on Friday when we're going to be making this adorable sheep card from the catalog. Um, so cute. And this one uses the dies that you can also get. So that's a lot of fun. Okay. Happy stamping. Bye-bye.